What's up, YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying life today. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2024 Honda Ridgeline RTL. Huge thank you to Eric Robertson over at Safford Brown Honda of Arlington, Virginia for allowing me to do this video for you guys today. If you are interested in this particular Ridgeline or any Honda product, then I'll be sure to have Eric's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. All right, well, just like usual, first, I'm gonna talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2024 Honda Ridgeline RTL. And this particular one has been painted in the $455 Sonic Gray Pearl. I wanted to preface this video by saying for 2024, Honda subtly updated the exterior styling of the Ridgeline with an updated front grille, an updated tailgate, and a couple other subtle features. They also updated the interior technology with a larger infotainment system and a new digital dash, which you'll see here in a few minutes. But as standard with the RTL, you get LED headlights with automatic high beams as well as standard daytime running lights, standard turn signals, and LED fog lights. But taking a step to the left, this is what the front end of the updated Ridgeline looks like. So you do get a satin black front grille with the Honda logo located at the center of it. And then above your grille and your headlights, you get some chrome trim that starts there and goes all the way to about right there. And then coming down just a little bit more, you get a satin black lower fascia with satin black outer grills and venting, which I'll give you a closer view of what that looks like now. So you can see we get some venting there and that's basically to redirect air around the vehicle, making it more aerodynamic, which hopefully in turn leads to better fuel economy. And then last but not least up here at the front end, you get 7.6 inches of ground clearance. But coming on down the side, like I said, you get that satin black lower fascia and that satin black lower fascia leads into your satin black wheel arch moldings. These are the standard wheels you get with the RTL and they are 18 inch sparkle silver wheels wrapped in 24560 Firestone Destination LE2 all season tires. I will give you a view of the tread pattern on these tires here real quick. And then if you are not a fan of the standard wheels, they do have one other wheel option, which I am displaying on screen now. And then coming on into the side view mirrors, as standard, you get body color mirror caps with integrated turn signals. And these side view mirrors are also heated, manual folding, you get memory function. So not only do you get two memory seat adjustment settings that's gonna memorize your driver's seat, those settings also memorize your outside mirror settings as well. And then last but not least, you also do get your blind spot monitoring located right there and then about right there on your passenger side door panel. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a step back and give you a little side profile shot of this thing. So that is what the Ridgeline's side profile looks like. And you may notice that you do get satin chrome window trim as well as body color door handles with keyless access. Just keep in mind though, the keyless access function is only on your front two door handles. The rear two door handles do not get the keyless access function. And then coming down to the bottom of all of your passenger doors, you get some satin black door cladding. And then you also do get a capitalist filler neck, but in order to open up your fuel door, you have to go in here, press this button on the driver door, and then you get access to your capitalist filler neck. And 87 octane will do you just fine. Closing that back up, up top here, you have your body color shark fin antenna. You have your integrated third brake light. And then you also get a power sliding rear window with a rear window defroster. A lot of the other midsize trucks in this class have a manual sliding rear window. So it's nice to see that the Ridgeline has the power sliding rear window. And then giving you a rear three quarter shot of the Ridgeline, you may notice the updated tailgate applique is what I would call it. But I'm gonna give you a little booty shot. That is what she looks like here at the back. And as standard with this thing, you get standard taillights. You also get, obviously, for 2024, the updated tailgate. And then above where it says Ridgeline, you have your backup camera. So for the 2023 and below, there was no like Ridgeline stamped into the tailgate. Uh, but for 2024, you now get the Ridgeline stamped into the tailgate. You get the chrome Honda badging on the lower left-hand side of the tailgate. And then to the right of your backup camera, um, this is a dual action tailgate, so you can either open it up the normal way, or there is one other way you can open it up, which is if you reach your hand underneath here and you pull out, it also opens up this way as well. So it's nice to have that dual function tailgate. You also get cargo lighting. They are halogen, one there, one there. 
You get some storage on the right hand side of the tailgate. Not much storage in there. It doesn't look like it's waterproof or watertight, but you could fit maybe like jumper cables or something like that in there. And then you also do, which is very nice with the Ridgeline, um, get this composite bed. You can, basically can't rip this thing up. Like we, I have a 2007 Honda Ridgeline. It has a very similar feel to this composite tailgate and it looks you know beside from a bunch of scratches it looks brand new and it, no gouges or anything like that and we've used it a lot but anyways you also do get a trunk back here that is locking so if you put your hand underneath here you'll feel a little pad and if you pull up on that pad you get quite a bit of storage space this also can double as a cooler because you get a drain plug on the lower left hand side of the trunk which is very nice so if you do any tailgating this is a very nice thing to have because again it doubles as a cooler but for me, I've got a bunch of junk that just sits in here. Like I've got shoes, jackets, jumper cables, all the real necessities. If I do end up getting like stuck on the side of the road for a while, I've got my nice little, um, you know, necessities for that in the back of my ridge line. And then you also get a spare tire as well as your jack back here and closing that back up. You get two tie down hooks in each corner. So that's two, four, six, eight. And that's kind of about it for what we got going on in the tailgate area. I'm going to close that back up and we're going to finish things off here at the back end. So you may notice that you do get a satin black rear bumper with a dual exhaust. And then in between the dual exhaust setup, you get a class three trailer hitch. And to the left of the hitch, you have your seven pin connector. And then I did want to mention the max payload capacity of the RTL is 1,544 pounds and the max tow capacity, no matter which trim level you get of the Ridgeline, is 5,000 pounds. So my family has a 21 foot Key West 219, which is a 21 foot center console, but it's almost a 22 foot. It's right at the capacity. I have a 2007 Ridgeline. It pulls okay. I'm interested to see how the new Ridgeline would tow 5,000 pounds with the nine speed automatic transmission. I have not driven one of these towing 5,000 pounds. I would like to, haven't. I've driven my 2007 and it does it. It's got 230,000 miles on it and it still tows 5,000 pounds with no issues. Uh, even though uphills, it does struggle a little bit. But anyways, with that stuff out of the way, let's move into performance. Popping open that hood reveals the three and a half liter naturally aspirated V6 that makes 280 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque. It is mated to a nine speed automatic transmission for a zero to 60 time in 6.2 seconds. And if you are wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 18 miles per gallon in the city, 24 miles per gallon on the highway for 21 miles per gallon combined with all wheel drive. One of the things that the Ridgeline gets flack for is that it's kind of like called a minivan with a bed, but that's kind of a good thing. And I have a 2007, so it rides kind of like a minivan, but then it's got the bed in the back and it's pretty capable. Yes, it's not the most capable, Capable in the mid-size truck segment but really how often are you going to be towing at max capacity how often are you going to be you know putting stuff in at max payload so this is going to do everything that you needed to do it's still going to get good fuel economy it's going to be pretty peppy but it's just going to be very comfortable and it's going to ride kind of like a minivan but if you're enjoying the video so far today please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you're enjoying the video, if you've learned anything from the video, please just take a second to like, comment, and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into the interior. Moving on into the interior, as before mentioned, you do get keyless access. So all you have to do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, put your hand behind the door handle, and it will unlock. You can also lock it if you press this button right here and it will lock back up. This is what the key fob looks like. It's mostly satin black and then going over the functions on the key fob, starting from the top, you have your lock function, your unlock function, your remote start function, and your panic function. And if you wanted to remote start it, you have to lock it first and then you press and hold on this button and it'll fire up. And that is what it sounds like when you fire the ridge line up from the exterior's perspective. Now. With the RTL, you can only spec it with the black leather upholstery. So that is what these front seats look like. I'll get into that stuff here in a second, but we're gonna start with the driver's side door panel. So at the top of the door panel, you get some vinyl wrapping. Then you get two memory seat adjustment settings, a chrome door handle, some gray trim. You're unlocking your lock functions. This button is going to restrict your passenger window privileges. Automatic up and down windows in the front. You do not get automatic up or down windows in the back. 
Then you get a leather wrapped armrest that is nicely padded with some accent colored stitching. Then you get some storage space here. You could set a phone, some more storage space. Pressing on that is going to pop open your fuel door. And then you get more storage space at the bottom of the door panel, followed by a speaker. And then again, you can only spec this with the black leather upholstery. However, as standard with the RTL, you get a 10-way power driver seat with two-way power lumbar, as well as a four-way power passenger seat. These seats as standard are also heated with three levels of adjustability. But I may notice, or you won't, I do want to point out that you do get some white accent colored stitching. And stepping on into the interior, you may notice what is new for 2024. But take a listen to what the door sounds like when it closes. And now we're basically just going to go throughout the entire interior. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with these controls over here and work my way throughout the interior. So starting over here, here are your side view mirror controls. To the right of that, you have your econ button. So that is like your economy drive mode, essentially. And then coming down here, this is to turn your lane keeping system on or off. This is going to turn your traction control system on or off. And if you click this, this is going to turn your forward collision warning on or off. And then to the right of that, you have your button to turn the cargo lights on or off. And then as standard, you get a tilting and telescoping steering wheel, meaning you can push the steering wheel away from you. You can bring the steering wheel towards you and the steering wheel will also move up and down. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back into its position, lock that into position. And now the steering wheel is not going to move. By the way, you also do get a leather wrapped wheel, but I'm just kind of jumping the gun a little bit because first let's take a listen to the turn signal. That is what the turn signal sounds like. And not only is this your turn signal control stock, this is also your headlight and fog light control stock. So right there, that is headlights off. Do that one more time now that's headlights automatic. That is parking lights on and all the way up is headlights in the always on position. And then right now the fog lights are in the on position. Now the fog lights are in the off position, but I'm gonna turn it back into headlights in automatic because I think the vehicle does a good job at turning the lights on and off when need be. And then zooming back out, as already mentioned, this does get a leather wrapped steering wheel, but you do get steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. So you get a downshift paddle on the left and upshift paddle on the right. And like any other vehicle, you have your horn at the center. So let's take a listen. That is what the horn sounds like on the ridge line. Now on the left hand side, you have these controls here. So that is to go backwards on a track. That is to go forwards on the track. Obviously this is your volume control toggle. And then beneath that, you have this home button here, this scroll knob. Those two controls are to control your new for 2024 partially digital gauge cluster. So from about here, this way is all digital, but you get an analog speedometer. So that is what these two controls do. I'll get into that in a second, but first let's go over the other controls. So that is to speak to the vehicle. And then on this side of the steering wheel, as standard with this, you do get adaptive cruise control, which I'll show you right here. You get the Honda sensing system. So you get adaptive cruise control, collision mitigation, braking, uh, lane keep assist, road departure mitigation. So this is the collision mitigation system, excuse me. So basically these are like your adaptive cruise control settings. And then this right here is your windshield wiper control stock. And then moving into our gauge cluster. Again, this is new for 2024. So on the left-hand side, it's digital. You get an analog speedometer on the right, but going throughout the digital screen, you have your digital speedometer readout right now where it says normal, that is your drive mode. Then you get the ambient exterior temperature, the odometer, transmission status stuff, fuel gauge down here. Right now that is displaying the time and then that is your coolant temperature gauge. And again, to control the left-hand side of the screen, you can use these uh, buttons right here. So this button and this toggle switch or whatever, I would call it a more of a scroll knob. You can go and you can pop up your range and fuel stuff. You can go into your speed and time. You can also go into your audio stuff. And all I'm doing is scrolling down on this and then clicking the home button. Then you can go into your phone stuff, navigation stuff, which is just your compass, all wheel drive, torque distribution. So if I floored this, all of this would get um, filled in. But if I was cruising at the highway, only the front wheels would really be powering the vehicle forward. So only partially the front part of that display is gonna be filled out. I can kind of demonstrate that here if I want to. So you can see the more gas I give it, the more that up arrow goes up. You see what I'm saying? So that is what I mean by that. And then, you can also see maintenance stuff. So your oil life, tire pressure stuff here. Uh, you can also have it be nothing. 
you can adjust the brightness of the display up or down right now it's on full brightness then you can go into gauge display settings uh, warnings no warnings at the moment range and fuel so that's basically it for that it's basically like the same screen that you find in like the Honda Civic so that is that and then coming over to here this is also new for 2024 and this is your nine inch infotainment system with wireless apple carplay and wireless android auto so they made the screen bigger and they also gave you wireless carplay and wireless android auto where it used to be wired so over here you have your physical buttons you have your physical home button physical back button your volume control knob if you press on the volume control knob it is going to turn the audio system off press that back on it comes back on and then pushing this is go backward on track that is to go forwards on a track and then navigating throughout the screen right now uh, you click on that it's going to switch you between your different audio sources as you may be able to tell that is the current song that is playing that is the signal of my phone as well as my battery phone uh, battery on my phone that is the current time this is the home screen you can see all of those different things you can pop up your trip computer which is going to show you your range and your average fuel economy right now this vehicle has three miles on it so it's not really going to have any sort of average fuel economy stuff of any you know substance because you know you could have floored it for the first three miles or you could have driven it you know in the parking lot for the first three miles so not enough data yet and then swiping over you can go in between your different general settings so those things there you can go in between your different vehicle settings where you can pop that stuff up all of these different things here go over to this side get your maintenance information and go back here swiping over that is your last screen and then one thing i wanted to show you is you can go into the display modes and you can either be uh like adjust the brightness of it you can turn the display off i believe if you touch anywhere back on this or touch that home button it's going to turn the screen back on and then down here you have your different shortcuts into your phone fm bluetooth audio trip computer stuff smart shortcuts or you can also do that display mode thing that i just showed you but that's kind of about it for the screen. The screen is very easy to use because there's not too much going on with the screen, uh, but you just know that it is a larger screen for 2024. And then down here, you have your hazard button. This is where it's gonna let you know if your passenger airbag is on or off. Push button, start button, you get some gray trim that goes across the dash. And then one thing I found interesting with the Ridgeline, I have a 2007, so this is new to me. You get a tri-zone climate control system, but you don't get the controls in the third row or second row area, excuse me. It doesn't have any controls back there. And that is because you have the controls for the third row from up here. So if you wanted to control the second row, I keep saying third row, I mean second row, you press RR settings and then that is your rear climate. You can adjust the fan speed of the rear climate. You can adjust the temperature of the rear climate. I wonder if you can't control, okay, you can control the temperature of the rear climate on both sides. Um, or you can turn the rear on or off. But anyways, you get the gist. You get physical climate controls, which I always like to see. It seems like a lot of new manufacturers or manufacturers are now moving to <coughs> the physical or the climate controls throughout the screen, which I personally am not a fan of. I really like the physical climate controls. And then as mentioned, as standard with the RTL, you get heated front seats with three levels of adjustability. You also get a little storage space here. You could set your phone. And then you also get a 12 volt power outlet. You get a USB-C port, a USB-A port. The wireless charging pad comes standard also with the RTL. And I have an iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is one of the bigger phones on the market. And it will fit in the wireless charging pad. And it will pop up here on screen once your phone starts charging. Um, I guess it's not going to do that right now. But anyways, you get a green light right there. I swear, last time I did it, it popped up on screen and gave me a little thing that was letting me know that my phone was charging. Of course, when I say it's going to do it, it doesn't do it. That's usually how it goes, right? But then over here, you get two cup holders. You get the push button transmission, which some people hate. But personally, for me, I like it. It makes it very easy to go in between gears. Okay, maybe not truck-like, but whatever. You know, the Tahoe and the Suburban and the Escalade, they all have a push button transmission as well. And those are considered kind of like truck-like. Obviously, push your foot on the brake, pull back to go into reverse, push to go into neutral, push drive to go into drive. If you press that one more time, it's gonna put you into sport mode. And you can see that S right there letting you know that you are in sport mode. And then push B to go back into park, but I wanted to show you what the backup camera looks like. And you can go in between the different backup camera views here. So that is what those different views look like push p to go back into park this is going to bring you in between your different drive modes like your normal mode your snow mode your mud mode and your sand mode so you can see you get a couple different graphic or whatever's um for that animations is the word i'm looking for 
And then also, I believe for 2024, you get a larger center um, storage space down in here. So there is no connectivity down in here, but I'd say you probably get about eight to 10 inches of depth. You also get a spot right here. You could set a phone if you wanted to, kind of like that, and then you can close that back up. Uh, actually, I guess it doesn't close all the way. So you scratch that, you can't do that, but you can set something in there that will fit. And then it is a nicely padded leather wrapped armrest with some accent colored stitching. And then moving over to this side, you get a lockable lower glove box with quite a bit of storage space. You can see right now the owner's manual is in there, but you can still get some room for some napkins, straws, snacks, you know, the essentials of what you put in your uh, glove box, at least what I do. And then over here, you get an auto dimming rear view mirror with your universal garage door opener on the bottom. So if you own a house with three garage bays, you can open them, them, open them up individually. And then over here, this is your light control. So right now when I open up the doors, the interior lights will not turn on. If I have that like flush, when I open up the doors, the interior lights will turn on. And if I click all the way to the right, that is your instant dome light on button, turning on all the interior dome lights. I personally like to leave it on door. And then you get your reading lights, both of which are LED for the driver and the front passenger. You also get a power sunroof as standard with the RTL. So if you pull back on that, that is going to slide the sunroof open. The sunroof uh, also does tilt. So if you wanted to tilt the sunroof, all you would have to do is push up on it and you can see it is tilted. Push forward and it will close right back up. And then the function to the right of that is to open or close your power sliding rear window. So pull back to open it, push forward to close it. And then up top here, you have your sunglass holder. You may notice that this is a very similar sunglass holder to what you get in like the Honda Odyssey, except you don't get that mirror like you get on the Odyssey. So it's kind of like they use the same thing, but you don't get the mirror, which is kind of weird. But then moving into the driver's visor, opening the visor up, you get a vanity mirror with two vanity lights. And then does this slide forwards and backwards? No, it does not. Oh, yes, it does. So it will slide forwards and backwards. So that is definitely nice. I did a video with an Odyssey and I'm not sure if maybe I didn't pull hard enough, but the Odysseys did not slide forwards and backwards. And then over here, you get an poop handle. The front passenger also gets an Opu handle, and that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in these front seats. I will say though, that these front seats are very comfortable. They've got really nice padding to them. And I think even if you weighed like 250 pounds, I'd still think you'd be very comfortable in these front seats. It's got nice padding, the bolstering's not too aggressive, and you could do a very long road trip in this thing with, you know, four people in your family. Um, but now I want to throw the entire window sticker on screen and you guys can take a look at a couple different things. You can take a look that you have a seven speaker audio system, heated front seats, a tri-zone climate control system, and everything else you can read on the window sticker. But I'm just going to highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2024 Ridgeline RTL is spec is $44,430. So not actually a crazy amount of money. I think the RTL really is the best bang for your buck when it comes to the Ridgeline trim lineup. It's gonna give you everything that the other trims have really. The next one up is the Trail Sport, which is kind of like the off-road version of this. I don't believe it really raises the um, ground clearance. I think it just gives you an off-road tuned suspension. And then the black edition is kind of just like black out exterior and then a black leather seats, I think. I know the out exterior is all blacked out, but I think this is the best value right now for the 2024 lineup of Ridgelines. The RTL may be the way to go if you're looking for value. But I do like the way the black edition looks, don't get me wrong. This is what the rear door panel looks like. Again, you don't get automatic up or down windows back here, but the windows do go all the way down. And one thing that's interesting comparing this to my 2007 Ridgeline, the 2007 Ridgeline has a much larger rear door. But anyways, just like the 2007, you get a cup holder. My Ridgeline does not get this thing where I could set a smartphone. Then you get a nicely padded leather wrapped armrest with some stitching, no storage space, but you do get a speaker. This is what these rear seats look like. And then one thing I really like about the Ridgeline is the how these seats fold up like this. So you see how it folds up, but then it gives you that 
flat storage space down there. That is very nice. I have an Australian Shepherd and he lays right here and it's a very comfortable spot for him. He's not a huge dog, but he's a bigger dog and he's very comfortable laying down right here. And it also gives him that little lip that kind of keeps him supported in there. So I like this, um, the way that these seats fold up. And then let's see, seat comfort back here is very, very comfortable. But up top here, you get a spot you could set your dry cleaning, which is right here. Then you get a no poop handle. You get the same stuff on that side. You also get a dome light that you can turn these dome lights on individually back here. So I'm gonna let the lights turn off. You can see individually, individually. Then you get a Bluetooth mic pickup for your Bluetooth phone. Coming over to here, you get a seat back pocket behind the driver's seat. You get a seat back pocket behind the passenger seat. You also get two HVAC vents. And down here, you get a 12 volt power outlet. I'm just not quite sure how well that's getting picked up on camera. And then you also get a center fold down armrest, which I'm gonna unbuckle this and open this thing up and you get two cup holders, a little bit of storage space, and the armrest is nicely padded. I'm very comfortable in these second row seats. I am five foot nine and I am adjusted behind myself here in the front seat. So you can see I've actually got plenty of knee and leg room. Here's another view of that knee and leg room. And when it comes to headroom, I've got plenty of headroom left over as well. So I've done videos with Nissan Frontiers, uh, the new GMC Canyon, the new Chevy Colorado, um, eh, Ford Rangers. I haven't done a video with a Ranger in a while. I'm interested to see what the new Ranger is like, but I would think that this is probably the most comfortable mid-sized truck you can get because it's kind of rides like a minivan. You know what I mean? The other trucks are not going to ride like a minivan. Yes, they are going to have greater tow capacity. So if that's what you're looking for, you might want to go that. They're also a little bit more rugged looking and you know, they've got that truckness to them, if you know what I'm saying. But you know, we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior. So I want to see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I'll see you guys in the driver's seat. All right, now on to the driving portion of the video. Take a listen. One thing about Honda's V6 is that they actually do sound pretty good. And I'm not a huge fan of V6s, but I will give it to Honda. They do know how to make a V6 sound good, especially when you're ripping on these things. They sound good in the higher RPMs. Now, the Ridgeline is such a good vehicle. And I can say that for a fact because I have a 2007 and it's got 234,000 miles on it. Knock on wood, nothing bad has happened to it yet. So I'm very, very, very happy with how it has held up. And I would think that this one can probably hold up to that many miles as well. See, it tells you now the wireless charging pad. The one time I say that it's gonna get a message when you put your phone on the wireless charging pad, it doesn't show up, but every other time it does. That's just my luck. But now I'll do take a little right turn here. And uh, I do think that this thing will have the same longevity as my 2007, you know what I mean? It's uh, it's a Honda. They make a very quality product for the long term and they are also, this thing's very, very comfortable. Let me give you a nice little acceleration. You guys can hear that V6. Can't get on it too much because I don't want to go too fast throughout here, but the way this thing handles bumps, I just did a video with a Honda Odyssey and the Odyssey probably went over bumps better. Like I would say that this thing has a firmer suspension than the Odyssey, but for a truck, it is very comfortable when going over bumps. You know, sometimes when you get into like some of the new trucks, even the mid-sized trucks, and you go over bumps and stuff, they really like bounce you around. Whereas this has a full independent suspension all the way around. So it goes over bumps with ease. It really does. Like you're not gonna get that same like jolty kind of feeling that you would with a truck that has leaf springs in the rear because that really bounces you around. You know, even though it's not bad on the new mid-sized trucks, it still does bounce you around a little bit and it definitely bounces you around more than it would, um, you know, in the Ridgeline like we have here. So I'm gonna do a nice acceleration here. Give you a little something something here. It's here. Sounds really good once you get it up higher in the RPMs. Now, this thing isn't fast, but it's not slow. It's got kind of the right amount of power 
for a daily driver and it'll get the job done you know if you're not towing anything you're never going to really feel the need that it needs more power especially with the nine speed and i think that's kind of where my ridgeline kind of you know lacks a little bit is that it's got a five speed so it doesn't really have like a bunch of different gears to choose from whereas this does so you know it can downshift like one or two gears and kind of put you in the optimal rpm range whereas in the ridgeline if i got a downshift it's really going to bring the rpms up bring the fuel economy down so that is what's nice about having the nine speed nine speed automatic and that's what it's kind of nice about having these new transmissions eight nine ten speeds because they can really find you that right gear for whatever speed you are going a lot of the vehicles kind of do gear hunt i haven't noticed gear hunting in this uh, but i haven't really driven it long enough to notice it doing that but i wouldn't suspect that it would i think honda would tune their transmission the right way um so overall man this thing is just it's very comfortable it makes for a fantastic daily driver because it's not huge so you can pretty much park it anywhere it's easy to park and it's just it it's very comfortable in the way that it drives the seats are very comfortable it's well insulated from the outside world i like the new nine inch screen it just looks more updated than oh that's the same color i believe as this ridgeline uh what is this person doing i don't know what she is doing but this is a nova driver for you i think she was gonna go that way but now i, I have no idea okay nova drivers um anyways yeah paddle shifters i would never use the paddle shifters actually maybe i would use the paddle shifters if i was feeling it but just a very very comfortable truck but also minivan in one and that's definitely a good thing in my personal opinion you know that's what like truck people are like oh yeah it's a it's a minivan with a truck bed okay yeah well it rides like a minivan but it can tow 5,000 pounds and how often are you really going to be towing up upwards of 5,000 pounds if you're doing that often then you might want to look into getting an f-150 or you know a gmc canyon those can tow up to 7700 pounds so it just really all depends on what you're going for if you're not towing that often but you do throw stuff in the bed but you do tow maybe like a small little boat that's under 5000 pounds i would take a hard look at the ridgeline because for everything it does a good job at pretty much everything it's comfortable it's efficient it can tow it can throw you can throw stuff in the bed you can bring your family around in it so it pretty much does everything that you need a vehicle to do but it also has the capabilities of a truck but the ride quality of a minivan so yeah, that's my summary of the ridgeline but that's it for today's video if you guys did enjoy the video please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button i'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and i cannot reach my goal without your support so if you enjoyed the video if you learned anything from the video please take a second to like comment and subscribe those things help me get one step closer to achieving my dreams uh, so i'd appreciate it if you do that but again that is it for today's video i will catch you all in the next one peace